We're breaking down seven techniques I learned working in Michelin star restaurants and attending the CIA that's going to elevate your demi glace at home. We're not only going to go over how to get the most flavorful full body demi glace, but we're going to do a taste test to see if it's even worth using expensive veal. As a bonus, I'm going to show you a technique to get the most yield out of your bones. But first, what is demi glace? According to author James Peterson in the book Sauces, which I highly recommend, traditionally, demi-gloss is a brown stock that has been thickened with roux and reduced until it has the consistency of a light syrup. To make modern demi-gloss, simply take a good gelatinous stock and reduce it to about a fifth of its original volume. Place a rack onto a sheet tray and spread out the veal bones, making sure not to overcrowd them. Racks not only produce even browning on the bones, but they help the fawn to brown which is going to intensify the flavor and color of your jus. The ideal cut is high in collagen, which when exposed to heat for a long time, breaks down into gelatin. Not only do veal bones have a high amount of collagen, but they also have a high amount of glutamates, which adds the umami flavor to the finished demi -gloss. To add more body to your jus, add in 15% by weight of chicken feet, but this is completely optional. A lot of Michelin star restaurants add calves feet to their veal stock, which turns out to be a lot harder to find than veal bones. Instead, I like to use chicken feet because they are not only neutral in flavor, but they pack a lot of collagen, which turns into gelatin. Alternatively, you can make demi glace with beef instead of veal by using 50% by weight of beef bones and 50% chicken feet. The chicken feet will bring the flavor a lot closer to veal and add much needed collagen, which is what breaks down into gelatin with heat and time. Roast the bones at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes, rotating halfway through until they are lightly golden brown. Place the veal bones into a pot and place the chicken feet off to the side. I cook them at different times because chicken bones are a lot smaller than veal bones and therefore need less time to cook. According to The Professional Chef, written by the Culinary Institute of America, cooking times depend on the size of the ingredients. Because chicken feet are a lot smaller in size than veal bones, we need less time to extract their flavor and collagen. The cooking time depends on the size of the bones. We want to cook it long enough to break the collagen down into gelatin, but we want to cook it short enough to retain as much flavor as we can in the stock. The longer we cook the stock, the more volatile flavor compounds we are cooking out. Remove the extra fat from the sheet tray, which can actually be strained and used to cook with. To remove all the fawn from the sheet tray, which adds amazing flavor and color to the jus, flip the rack over and place on top of the tray. Add enough water to the sheet tray to cover the rack and place back into the oven for 5 minutes. Then, using a flat wooden spoon, not one of those round useless ones, loosen all the fond. Add this to the stock pot with the veal bones and make sure to get all that goodness in. The whole reason why we roast the bones is to be able to get the fond in, which makes this a jus and not just the stock. Cover the top of the bones with ice and add just enough water to barely submerge the bones. As the jus cooks, the bones will settle down into the water. It is very important to use cold water when making stock, but if you really want to go the extra step, use ice, which is going to help shock the protein and the fat, helping it float up to the top, preventing it from emulsifying into your stock, making it cloudy. Slowly bring the jus to a simmer. Then, use a spider to remove all the impurities that float to the surface. You might be wondering, what is an impurity? An impurity is excess protein. We want to remove this because if it emulsifies into the stock, it will make it cloudy, it can flatten out the flavor of the stock, and it will also change the texture of the jus. To create a convection simmer, pull the pot halfway off the burner and increase the heat to a boil. Use a spoon to remove as much fat from the jus as possible. Then lower the heat and place the pot back fully on the burner, allowing this to cook for 4 hours. Pulling the pot halfway off the burner is going to create a convection simmer. The boil is going to push all the impurities up and over, making it a lot easier to skim it off the top. Having a bowl of water to dip your spoon is going to make sure that you don't reintroduce impurities back into your jus. After the 4 hours are up, give the jus another skim and add in the chicken feet. 
which should be cold from the fridge. You can either top this off with more filtered water, but I like to cover with a lid, ideally glass so you can see in. When covering with a lid, be sure to lower the heat to prevent the jus from boiling. Classic mirepoix consists of 50% onion, 25% carrot, and 25% celery. But because demi-glace is cooked down so much, I like to use a modified mirepoix with celery root instead of celery and replacing half the onion with leek. When celery is added to a jus and reduced down, it tends to add bitter notes, so I like to use celery root instead. As for the onion, I find that the more refined flavor of leek tastes better in demi glace. Peel your carrots, onion, and celery root, which the peel can add an undesirable earthy flavor. Split the leek in half and wash out any dirt. Cut all the vegetables into one inch pieces and I like to use a ratio of 15% by weight of the bones and mirepoix with equal quantities of each vegetable. A good ratio for the vegetables is 15% by weight of the total bones. That might sound like very little, but adding too much vegetable into the stock can overpower the bone flavor, especially the carrots adding a lot of sugar into the stock, making it sweet. Toss the mirepoix with enough tomato paste to coat. Tomato paste will add color and umami flavor to the jus. I like to add some of the filtered veal fat from roasting the bones to help get better color on the veg. Roast this at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes or until the tips of the onions start to char. Skim the stock one last time. Once the vegetables are in, it becomes harder to skim. Add in the roasted vegetables and cook for 30 minutes. This might seem like a short cook time, but cooking your vegetables too long will give the jus a flat flavor, and the vegetables will start to break down, creating a gunky texture. Turn off the heat and add in fresh thyme, bay leaf, parsley stems, and peppercorns. Turning off the heat will allow any particles to fall to the bottom of the pot. To get the most aromatic flavor into our stock, we want to use the freshest herbs available. We also want to cook this for only 15 minutes because herb flavors are extremely volatile. Strain the jus into a large bowl or container and let this strain for 10 minutes to allow all the jus to filter through. Then strain this through two fine mesh strainers to remove as many particles as possible. Cool down the jus, then place into a container and into the fridge. When it cools, all the excess fat will rise to the surface. Scrape off all the fat and add the jus to a pan. If there are any particles on the bottom, remove them. We want to thicken our demi glace through reduction. This is going to intensify the flavor and it's going to give the demi glace a nice body. We want to use a wide pan to reduce the demi glace as fast as possible to retain as much flavor. Cook this down to nappe, which means to coat the back of a spoon. The best way that I have found to store this is to pour it into a silicone tray, then add to a cryovac bag and remove all the air to prevent frostbite. I like to label the bag with the weight. Alternatively, you can place the demi into a ziplock and into a bowl of water to force all of the air out. Here we have all three of the sauces. First one, this one tastes a little bit like old cow. I'm gonna say that this is probably the beef one. This one's a little bit darker because of the red wine. This is gonna be the chicken and it like packs umami. This one's super balanced and nothing really stands out. It's just a blank canvas to go. I'm gonna say that this one's probably veal. Beef, chicken, and this one be veal. Based off taste, the veal is a better one to go with because it's a blank canvas. It's perfect for adding flavor ton to it. But the chicken, it packs serious umami. For the veal costing about $30 in bones and the chicken costing about $5 in bones, because I save all my bones when I butcher chicken, and I only have to buy chicken feet for this one. This one is the cheapest at around $5 for a batch, where the veal and the beef are gonna be around $30 a batch. I would probably not make it with beef again. I'd either do veal for a special occasion, and I would do chicken for every day. To get the highest yield, make a remoulage which means re-wetting in French. Add the chilled bones with all the gelatin from the container 
to a pot and cover with cold water. Slowly bring to a simmer and skim off the usual suspects and any rogue aromatics. Cook for two hours, then add the chilled roasted chicken feet for another three. Add in your roasted vegetables with half of an onion brulee, which is cooked in a dry, hot pan until it is dark. This is solely for color. Cook the vegetable for 30 minutes, then turn off the heat and add in the aromatics for 15 minutes. Double strain as before, then cook this to demi-gloss consistency and add in the demi-gloss from the first batch. If you want to learn how to make the chicken version, you should check out this video or you should check out this playlist to see recipes on how to use it.